I don't know what happened, but I'm starting this video over. I'm going to be replacing that inverter today. It's been a long time since I made a video, and uh, for some reason the camera doesn't work, of course. But um, anyhow, I'm glad to be back. Uh, I'm going to be replacing that inverter today with a much larger one. I want to get it all done today so I can sit here and watch it for a week or two. And things are going to change. I'm going to have to replace that board. Have to replace some of the wiring. It's a very large inverter. I may not even have large enough wire for it. We will see. And uh, it, things are going to change. I have, I have to do a lot of work. One of my blue gauges up there isn't working properly, so I have to re replace that. But everything else in here has been working perfectly since I installed it. I've had no problems at all. Uh, batteries are working great. This new inverter is really big, so I may even have to put another eight batteries in for a second uh, 48 volt bank. But uh, Continental Battery does have them in stock, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll be back. Hey, here's the new inverter in the box. I haven't got it out of the box yet. It's a 10 kilowatt. Uh, inverter. I purchased it from Treeline Power Systems in Westminster, Colorado. It's a 48 volt, 10 kilowatt, uh, 240 volt split phase, good inverter. So uh, I'm not going to open it up yet until I get the board figured out and uh, how I'm going to mount it. I already got it all figured out. I just want to get it done. Uh, I'll be back. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do, this thing weighs 186 pounds. It is not light. 186 pounds worth of inverter. This is a chain hoist. And this is a trolley. So you can get the drift of what I'm about to do. This is the board. I'm going to mount it to the board. And put in a couple of hooks up here and uh, use the chain horse to raise it into position. So the problem I'm going to have is getting enough support because that's the only piece of uh, unit strut that I have left. So in order to get enough support I'm going to have to put in something up there to uh, hold it. And I hope I have enough of what I'm looking for. Also, I'm going to have to figure out exactly where I want it on that board. It's going to have to probably straddle these because it's going to have um, uh, bolts attaching it to the board. And then I'm going to put bolts through the board all the way through to the outside of the house to uh, hold it up, hold the board up. And it will also have some screws in it to get me all started. But I'll be back. Okay, there's my trolley system. This is Unistrut and a lot of wheel. Pretty cool, huh? My little railroad track. Pretty neat. So, I got the board all measured and cut, and it's going to come down right there. Directly over those wires is where the inverter is going to be. So I'm going to go outside and start work. Okay, there's the board. This is my lifting mechanism right there. And uh, there's been a little bit of a change of plan, but not too drastic. I have to do a couple more things. I haven't even taken this out of the box yet. I got the instructions out. That's about it. So. There's a dog up there hiding. Anyhow, I'm going to get busy. Okay, we're ready to put it in. Um, Randy, that owns the uh, Timberline um, solar store, he gave me this meter. He's really a nice guy. He's really a decent guy. So I got that one replaced. And it's showing where we have two amps draw right now. This one's still hooked up. 
this one's ready to rock and roll. It's hanging there on my pulley system. And I spaced it out from the board a bit so that there's a little bit of extra room. I don't know if you can see that or not. A little bit extra air getting through there. Not that it needs it. Uh, Randy had one of those apart and the transformer in this is one half of the unit. One half of this unit is transformer. It's, it's a monster. It's huge. But we're going to roll it over on its side. We're going to get all that stuff taken down and mount this board and relocate all that stuff. So, I'll be back. Oh. Okay, here's Sue. Get me out of here. We got this thing up in the air. It's not quite finished. Uh, we're going to put some bolts through the wall to help hold it. 186 pounds. And we're both tired. We actually ended up using my winch on the truck to get it up there. But it worked. Uh, now we're going to clean up before we try and hook it up. And uh, go from there. We'll be back. I think. Is it recording? Okay, I'm putting it back together. I got the, eight, the DC hooked up. Uh, so it's drawing zero right now. And it's turned off. I have turned it on and off and it worked. Uh, this has got 220 and 110. It's got the split phase. It also has a charger. You can charge your batteries. It has a built-in inverter. It has, uh, it, I'm not too sure about grid tie, but you can tie it into your uh, AC. This this turns on your uh, house AC to the, char to the unit, and that'll charge your batteries, that much I know. Uh, pretty cool so far. Um, there's a couple of things that I need to learn about it still. We're going to figure it all out. I don't know what happened to the label. I really don't, but it just flat worked. Uh, might need that later, but the label died. Okay, I'm going to keep installing here. Okay, it's up and running. I'm not quite finished. The air conditioner's on, the microwave is running, all the lights in the house are on. Uh, not the lights, but the uh, ceiling fans and a few other things. We're doing 27 amps, 28 amps. Just checking to see if anything's getting warm, and it's definitely not. Looking good. And of course, the uh, solar panels are working overtime. I got 43 amps going in, 53 amps going in right now to the batteries from the solar panels. So the solar panels are doing all the work. Looking good. I like the way this thing's going so far. Now I got a lot of cleaning and finishing and I need to test a couple things. I need to learn how to hook up this, this for 220. And I may go ahead and do that. It looks fairly simple. Boom. Anyhow, back to work. I like it so far. This has got, you can turn the, uh, um, the type of battery here, and I've got the charger set to zero, so the, the charger's turned off. And down on the bottom, if I can get in there, is these dip switches. And number four and five are turned on. Those are for 60 hertz and priority batteries. I'm not using the internal, um, whatever that thing is, the thing that makes it work. I'm not using the internal uh, charge controllers, those things. But I'm happy so far, it hasn't gone boom. I didn't know if I told you or not, but I bought a uh, 6,000 watt <coughs> uh, inverter off of 
and it's on, and it lasted 24 hours before it exploded. And I do mean it exploded. It went up with a boom. <clears throat> the, uh, this half is all um, transformer. I don't know if you can see it in there or not. The transformer ends right about there. And then you can see some of the electronics in there. It's, it's got some heavy-duty stuff in it, which is a good thing. So I need to put these covers on. I need to clean up. i got a lot of dust on my batteries. I need to clean the batteries and stuff like that. I broke uh, this. I'm still running through my uh, noise suppressor. The ham radio is on in there, and I couldn't hear any noise at all, so that's good so far. Got a lot more to do. I just mainly just clean up, and I want to run some bolts through the wall to hold that up better. Right. I'll be back. Okay, we're still experimenting with this thing. I got most of the mess cleaned up. I've got a router up there that I need to uh, put away, put in properly. Um, we're running 22 amps, 50 volts. 50.63 volts, and uh, Sue has got the toaster oven in there running, 1700 watt uh, air fryer, and it's the first time it's been run, it's cleaning, self-cleaning itself, so it's going to use a little bit of current, and that is the biggest reason that we wanted a bigger inverter, was for that thing. Um, the air conditioner is running much, much better than it was, which is a good thing. I'm happy so far. Like I said, the last one we bought, we bought that one from Amazon. It was one of those reliable converters, and it went boom. I mean, the sparks flew. Um, it was a good thing. It was an easy one. I am going to mount that inverter up there, right here, so that we can uh, plug it in in case of an emergency. Uh, it doesn't really look like we're going to be having one. I need to put in a multi-strip or something in there for lights. I have these lights that I use. <coughs> and that inverter doesn't have any receptacles on it, which is fine. Um, like I say, that's from Treeline Power Systems in Westminster, Colorado. Uh, if you find them online, they have them in stock. That's the shocking part. They actually have these in stock. Uh, you're going to go with an 8,000, but it was only like $200 difference. Maybe four hundred dollars difference between the eight thousand and the ten thousand, <clears> and they also have a twelve thousand. Um, we didn't need that much. I believe they have a fifteen thousand, and then they have smaller ones too. It's made by how do they spell it? S i s i n i g e e r. What are you tearing up? That was a good bowl. We call him shithead for a reason. But anyhow, uh, yeah, I think they also make some of Ames converter inverters. And uh, I did go in and turn on the, um, oh, what is that thing? The ham radio, and I didn't hear any new interference. We still got some cleaning up to do, and I've got a couple things I need to repair. When I was tightening this one here down, this this one is for load only. It, it that one just works off of uh, for the outside lights on each end of the built room here. Yeah, when I was tightening it down, I broke it. I killed it. But I have a million more. And then this is for that uh, Wi-Fi router up there. We went out last night and we watched Starlink satellites for couple hours. That was really cool. There's a lot of them up there. But anyhow, I'll uh, um, 
not published this one yet, and I'll give you another update tomorrow, see how it's doing. You all have fun out there. In the back, we're, uh, we're in the kitchen, we're cooking a, uh, um, some biscuits in the uh, air fryer, and that's what we've got. I don't know if you can see it or not. on the solar to batteries we have uh, nothing charging so it's late at night and we're hungry so we're cooking I want to see how this does we have about 10 more minutes of cook and time go and or whatever <laughs> speak English and uh, we'll go from there alright butter and uh, just melting it Voltage in the microwave, the, volt, the, the amperage is at 19 volt amps, 973 watts, and the um, voltage hasn't dropped below 49. Now it must be finished because the voltage is going back up, so it's 50.2 now. So we're doing okay. Uh, this thing's working pretty good, and it's not getting warm. None of my wires are getting warm. Nothing's getting warm anywhere. So it's working pretty well. Um, we'll just see how that inverter lasts for a while. But anyhow, uh, I'm going to go eat biscuits with butter. Bye. Okay, it's been running for about three days now. And it's running pretty good. Two and a half days, maybe. I put a camera on. So that I can monitor all of that and it works pretty good um, all in all I think it's working really really well the air conditioner was on all night last night and it turned itself on by itself this morning I forgot it was on and it didn't even turn on turn the TV off like the old one was I was just having too much voltage drop with the old one anyhow if you like that inverter uh, they're really 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 decent so far it does have the uh, charge controllers built into it if you don't want to use charge controllers like I am, but my system's working pretty good. I, I check the battery water. I checked the water in them uh, this morning, and I only had to use uh, a little over a gallon for all the batteries, and that's pretty good. So right now we're charging at 58 amps for 58 volts and 20 amps going into the batteries right now and we're using 3.97 amps on uh, AC with the air or I'm sorry on yeah on AC with the air conditioner working of course the the wind power never does anything and this is the 12 volt section down here so it's all working fantastic, exactly as planned. Um, these are the EP Ever charge controllers, all of these. These are 80 amp, I believe. And these are 40 amp, I believe. And we have eight panels going into this one, eight panels going into this one. These are 300 watt panels, and these are 235 watt panels. And these panels are both the same. There's two panels on each of those, but they're on opposite ends of the house. That's why I have them on uh, two different charge controllers. And I'm tying them together with the PT ADP port. These two are tied together. And uh, it's, it's making everything work pretty well. Uh, I've got the uh, temperature sensors down here. And uh, I could turn on more light too if I need to, if you can't see it. But this is a 220 volt inverter. I've got it wired at the moment for 110. I'm going to put in 220 later. And uh, it's all working. It's working great. So I think I'm going to shelve and stop eating the door. Go, go. I'm going to finish cleaning up my mess and get this one published today. You all have fun out there. This, oh, one more thing. I got these from uh, Treeline uh, Power 
Systems in Westminster, Colorado. This is made by Siginer, S-I-G-I-N-E-R, and so far it's great. Other than this, which I think it may have been just because it was out in the sun for a little bit, uh, this is a fantastic inverter. 10 kilowatt, they make them in 8 and 6, and uh, they also go 12 and 15 kilowatt. This one was 2000 and uh, it's been real, really well worth it. So I'm going get, to uh, get everything out of here and get cleaned up. Y'all have fun out there.